Hello everybody and welcome. So let's go over some Salesforce Lightning development stuff today. But very quickly, just a quick disclaimer. The reason why I haven't really been making videos on this topic is because I haven't actually worked in a professional environment in which the org, org it's, the Salesforce org itself is using Lightning. Uh, so I haven't really felt like a good enough authority figure to speak on it, even though I, I have studied it in the past and I've done it in my own personal projects and things like that. Uh, so I'll take that for what it is. But anyways, uh, I do have a playlist already here called Salesforce Lightning Development Setup, which I highly recommend going through if you don't, if you don't have you know the Lightning environment set up for yourself. Uh, these videos will basically cover that. But anyways, so for today's video, I kind of want to go over Dev Hub and Scratch Orgs one more time, and then probably after that, we'll start making videos on the actual Lightning web components themselves. So if you find that interesting, consider subscribing. And if you have any comments or questions or you want to see video topics on other things, feel free to leave them down in the comment section down below and we'll go from there. Right. So first things first, uh, let's go into our trailhead org. And what we want to do is we want to enable a few settings. What I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to go into the setup and then in the quick find, uh, we're going to type in domain and we're looking for the my domain option. And essentially we just have to enable this. Uh, what this will do if it's not enabled for you is it will basically give you a standardized URL. So for example, here in the my domain details, I already have it enabled, but if you were to click edit, so basically choose a name that you want for your org and then make sure it's using the enhanced domains and just check these boxes. Basically, um, one quick note though, is you want to, you know, enable my domain. Um, some things can break. So obviously don't do this in your production org, uh, you know, follow the procedures, read more documentation. I'm kind of just going over this in a trollhead org, so it's not gonna, really going to affect anything. But just know that, you know, if you, if you enable this, your URL is going to change and things can break if depending on how things are set up. Uh, so just understand that. But anyways, once the my domain is set up back in the quick find, you want to enable the dev hub. So we're going to type in dev hub right here. And basically what we want to do is right here, just enable it by toggling it. And essentially what a dev hub is, you can kind of read what it does here, but this allows us to create and manage those scratch orgs themselves. Uh, that's basically all it does. It's just a hub where you can manage your scratch orgs. Uh, now what are scratch orgs you ask? Well, if you're not really familiar with scratch orgs and that type of development, I guess like the easiest way to think about it is, is it's basically kind of like a sandbox, but it expires. And it, why would we want to use a scratch org? And that might be a question you might be having. So a, a few things to know about scratch orgs is, are that uh, when you create a scratch org, it's created without any metadata, unlike a sandbox that you know you might create from a production environment, right? And this may or may not be useful, but it might be useful. For example, if you want to work like on a specific project and you don't want to worry about dependencies that might come about from another project that someone else in your team might be working on. I know it sounds kind of abstract, but you can kind of think of it that scratch orgs allow you to work just like your, your application in like in a silo and you don't have to worry about someone else's project. And also uh, just to know that you can configure scratch orgs, which we'll kind of go into in a little bit later. You can configure them uh, using a uh, project uh, definition JSON file to basically enable or have it already to basically be created and set up uh, with features that might not be enabled or set up in your actual org. And it's really easy to do. You can just, you know, go into the definition file and say, Hey, I want to use this feature. And basically what this allows you to do is, you know, basically you can create a scratch org with this thing enabled that might not be enabled in your actual org. And you can just test drive it yourself or demo it and show it off to people that to your stakeholders that might be interested in this feature. And I'm pretty sure this is completely free. So kind of cool uh, way of being able to test features without worrying about worrying about and going through the pain of actually enabling them in your org that has a bunch of metadata already set up and that can kind of screw things up. So just some th reasons why you might want to consider using a scratch org. Like I said, this is just a simple tutorial video, that, but we'll go much more in depth uh, as we go into these videos in the future. I will make more videos in the future going much more in depth, but you know, kind of sticking to the basics here. That's I think pretty much we all, all you have to understand is, you know, you're spinning up another, another environment, but it's like very bare bones, you know, just has what you need to start creating your, your lightning web components and your app solutions. So yeah, I hope that's enough of an explanation for now. 
So, like I said, uh, for now, just enable Dev Hub. Uh, I'm not going to go through any of these options for now because, like I, how I said, I want to keep things very basic. So, all you need is just enabling the Dev Hub. Once you have that, we can kind of start working on the Visual Code side of things. So, again, if you're not familiar with Visual Studio Code, check out that playlist. It will basically go through everything you need to know to get to this point. But, anyways, once we are in here, what we want to do first is we want to hit Control Shift P if you're on a on Windows or Command Shift P if you're on Mac. If you don't feel like doing keyboard shortcuts, I'm pretty sure you can go to uh, View right here on the uh, Tools. I'm not sure what to call this, and then just click on Command Palette, and it'll basically bring up your options, anyways. But what we want to do here is we want to go ahead and authorize the Dev Hub in VS Code. As you can see here, here's the the command for that: authorize a Dev Hub. Uh, click on that, follow the steps and everything. Uh, make sure you connect, make sure you accept if, it, if, it, if there's a prompt for you to do so. Once you have that done, then you can move to the, I guess, final step, which is to create the actual scratch org itself. To do that, again, we're going to run another command. This one's going to be called create a default scratch org. And I guess I'll actually do this one with you guys, just so you can kind of see. It's going to ask us, it's asking for a definition file, which I'll go into a little bit later. So for now, just choose the default option. And here it's going to ask us for a name. I'm going to go ahead and just call this trailhead YouTube, or actually trailhead. And then I guess you can't use any dashes. So it's just all one word. I'll use camel case. So I'm going to say trailhead YouTube uh, dev dev hub like so. We'll click enter and then it's going to ask us for how many days we want to have this scratch org active. The max is 30 and the default is seven days. Uh, for now, I'm going to just say expire in one day. So, you know, after 24, basically 24 hours from now, this scratch org will no longer be available. It'll be gone. So just click enter. It's going to run the command. You can see on the right, lower right hand corner, uh, it is creating a default scratch org. Okay. And after some time, you can see here that we got a message saying that it successfully ran. So what we want to do now is actually, let me just open up term terminal here, and then I'm going to click on output with the Salesforce CLI selected so I can kind of see what happened here. So as we can see here, it was able to create the default scratch org. And in case you're wondering, uh, or rather just to explain when we run a command here, basically it's just like a, acting as a shortcut in case you don't feel like memorizing these commands that you would have to, you know, type into the terminal itself. There's this little window icon right here. If you click on it, um, it should open up a browser window for, for you, which let me go ahead and pull this up right here. As you can see here, this URL right here is much different than, you know, the my domain URL that I have for my actual trailhead org. So if I go back here, you'll see that my org name is Chris dash Marquez dash dev hed. And then it's, it's a trailhead account or a trailhead org. So, it, you know, it says trailblaze on it. Uh, so that's, I guess, kind of how, you know. Uh, essentially this is now, you know, a scratch org that I spun up for one day. It launched us into just the back end to set up, but we can go into an app kind of like cells or something. And we can see here that, yeah, it's basically a sandbox, but it's a scratch org. <laughs> so one thing to note though, is by default, uh, well, depending, I guess, but the definition file that we used when we basically just glossed over it, when we were creating the scratch org. Uh, I think by default has it to where it doesn't give us any data. So, you know, as you can see here, there's no accounts, there's no contacts, nothing is there. Um, pretty nifty thing that you can do is, I guess we can start explaining what that definition file was. If we go into the config here and we open this project scratch def JSON file, you'll see this is what, this is what that command was using to basically create our scratch org for us. Now there's like a whole. Uh, I want to say a whole documentation guide on how to build your own scratch org definition file. If you have like a very custom and a very custom setup that you need to uh, do. So I, I will link this in the description box below. So you guys can read if you guys are interested in that. Uh, but one that I thought was kind of interesting was the, the definition uh, for has sample data. So essentially if we were to say has sample data equals true, then when we create a scratch org, uh, it'll seed it with some sample data. So actually let's go ahead and just demonstrate that. So I'm going to go ahead and copy has sample data. 
and then anywhere in the file i'm just going to in quotes say has sample data and then set it to true and because it's a json i'll make sure to add a comma so that the rest of the things can be there without errors so let's go ahead hit save on this and i'm going to just create another default scratch org and as you can see here like how i said earlier it's asking us to provide a definition file which in this case is this file that we had just updated so we'll click on it and i guess we'll just call this like test two or something again it doesn't really matter how many days but i'll just say for one day and again it's going to create another scratch org for us and it's going to take a while so we'll let that complete okay and after a while we get the success message so it created one and now again i'm going to click on this window icon thing so it can open up my scratch org since the connection is set to test 2 which is the name of that scratch org so i'm going to hit and click on this the command to open the default org will run and after some time i see that this window opened and here is our test 2 scratch org so one more time i'm going to click on the app launcher and then we'll just go to the sales app and now if we did everything right we should see that we now have some sample data so we have some sample counts contacts you know so on and so forth and yeah i, I guess it's kind of nice that we can create a scratch or provision it and have some sample data that way you know we can work with it if we need to not too crazy uh, but just showing some basics on this now uh, one thing that you might be wondering is we're creating these scratch orgs how can we see how many we have uh, one thing you can do to do that is i'm going to go ahead and connect back to my actual trail head so i'm going to go ahead and click this right here uh, we are now connected back to our actual trailhead org i'm going to click on the window one more time kind of unnecessary since i already have a tab open <laughs> with it but just to kind of show you guys you know you, you can change between orgs and then click on that button so that you know it opens it up for you once that command runs though you can see here that again we're back in our trailhead org and to see the orgs that we have created uh we can click on this little app launcher again and we can type in active scratch org like this and you'll see there's an item called active scratch orgs we can click on this right here and this will this list view is showing us the active scratch scratch orgs and active basically means that we haven't deleted it right so uh we can just click into like the first one that we created together and you'll see here here is our scratch org that we had created i think in between the time that i had created um the trailhead dev uh, trailhead scratch org one i created another one on accident uh just because i wasn't sure why the url wasn't showing so you you'll be seeing three instead of the two that you might be expecting but anyways so yeah let's just click into one and you, know, you can kind of see you know this one was provisioned for seven days and here's the username and some information uh if you wanted to delete this because for some reason you just want to delete it or you're done with it you don't need it anymore or you you made it one by accident you can go come up to here to the little to the little uh carrot symbol click on it and just click on delete and actually let's just go ahead and delete all of them since we don't really need them anymore i'm going to delete this one and then lastly delete this one as well and now we no longer have any active scratch orgs uh if you wanted to see all the scratch orgs you had ever created you you can click on the app launcher again and then type in uh scratch org infos which is an item click on this and you'll see here all of the scratch orgs that have ever been created, I guess, uh, w within this dev hub. So, you know, if you just click on the one that we most recently deleted, click into it, you'll see here, here's some other information. And then you can see here, here's the person that deleted it, or rather the user ID, which is just me. And here's the date that it was deleted. So some possibly useful information to know. And uh, before we end this video, uh, I do want to go into the documentation for how to manage Scratch Orgs from the Dev Hub. Uh, this is basically where I learned uh, what I just showed you guys about how to see the act active Scratch Orgs and how to delete them and all that. Uh, one thing to note though, is that uh, what it says right here on line three, deleting an active Scratch Org does not delete the request that created it, but it does free up a Scratch Org so that it doesn't count against your allocations. So you basically, if you delete it, you will now have an extra slot to create a scratch work. I'm not sure what the limit is. I'm sure there's some other documentation that we can look at to see what, how many you can create and, and keep. But anyways, so that's uh, pretty much it. Just went over DevHub and scratch orgs. Hopefully you guys found these useful. Leave down below in the comment section if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, anything you guys want to 
want to talk about and like i said consider subscribing i would greatly appreciate that and i'll catch you guys in the next video